everybody, and welcome to the FanFlux Podcast, episode 84. I'm your host, KCW, and with me we have... Slicer. Hello. Zero. I'm appreciated. He is. He very much is this week. And Kenshi. Hi. I'm Kenshi618, and true Kenshi fans will by now realize that Kenshi618 is all about three things, and three things only. Entertaining you, the fans, getting laid, and getting paid. I thought that I thought you were going to end with being Kenji. <laughs> that just goes without saying. I don't need to explain that. As the Kenji is implied. Well, all those things, three things, kind of do. You know, that's what being Kenji six one eight consists of. Yep. Oh, those yeah, those three things. Point. That's that's Kenji six one eight in a nutshell. Those three things. That's kind of all, all right. of the above. All right. Yeah. So. The fuck are we doing this week? Uh, Zero, you go first. All right, so um, I'm right before the final boss in Bloodborne now, and uh, so I decided to do some PvP, which is very fun. I won my, I actually won my first PvP match because I got invaded by somebody, and uh, Ludwig's Holy Blade is great because it's a great sword and. Yeah. People tend uh-huh, to die when it. you hit them with that. They die really fast. The problem is hitting them. Yeah. And there were two people, two people that were really annoying, because right, right in the area where I was fighting them, it was uh, uh, Nightmare of Mensis. It's the area I fight them is right after the Mikolash fight. Nightmare of Mensis? Mensis, whatever. Mensis, Mensis. It's a mensis. Is it, is it an E or an I? It's very important. M-E-N-S-I-S. Okay. Whew. Why? The other thing could have been really bad. But uh, it's right after this boss, and what this boss does is he just runs around in this humongous area. It's confusing, and it's a pain in the butt to go through, and he's not even really a boss. He's just a dude that runs away. Yeah, it's, right? it's, I've seen people do that. Yeah. It's pretty bad. So... Um, you know, it's after the Mikolash Cage area, and... So the what? Mikolash Cage. <laughs> <laughs> he, has a, he has a cage on his head. Is it filled with bees? No. <laughs> but it looks like... I feel like it should be in. filled with bees. <laughs> they should. Yeah. So, <laughs> not the bees. So... Two people I fought, what their main strategy was, was to run immediately back to that area and wait for me. To which I respond with, screw you, I'm going to sit here with all my enemy friends and wait for you to come to me. Because I'm invading you. All my enemy friends. Yes. Yeah. a bit of an oxymoron. <laughs> it makes huh? sense in context, but yeah. Yeah. But, um, so after about 15 minutes of doing nothing against this one guy. I decide to go down there, and he's just like, he does the gesture where he's like, yes! And I applaud him, and then left his world. Screw you, I'm not going to do that. Do and then what? Follow him into that freaking maze labyrinth where he can just ambush me all the time. Oh, I'm not, yeah. I'm not handing over the advantage to him. It's not you, the, like you lose anything for dying, though. You've already used up the insight to get there. Yeah, but I want to have a fair chance of winning. He doesn't want to You're invading somebody. You. Uh, you're a terrible person. I like duels. Yeah. Then, and that's exactly yeah, why I use Blue Elixir to make myself invisible so I can ambush people. You were the worst sort of person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Zero kind of has this mask of being a good person, but then he does all sorts of things that make you realize that he's not at all. <laughs> no, pretty much. Uh, you guys get me. <clears throat> so, starting to, yeah. So, um, so there was one guy, though, and he, I had the greatest battle with him. Of He had, like, the hunter axe, and I had my, my holy blade, and we were just going at it, and he was healing, and I was running away and having enemies attack him, and then trying to backstab him, because that's how I fight. And then he managed to thwart all my tactics until we finally got to the elevator right before uh, Murgo's wet nurse. He steps on the elevator and then immediately steps back off, and now there's a giant hole between us. So we're fighting around it. He's trying to use the Beast Roar spell to knock me into it, 
it comes down, and then I got on it, or he got on it, and he went up, then I brought it down, and then I went up, he charge attacks me, he goes back down, then he comes up, I land on top of the uh, elevator, and then we attack each other, and then I end up going down, and then he's up, and it goes back and forth like that, until he comes up, and he's got the wooden shield, like, ready for my, my charge attack. So I just charge attacked him, ran on there, and just kept swinging until he died, and it was by far the greatest battle I ever had. <laughs> also, the yeah, elevator was just kind of ridiculous. That sounds like the ending fight from, like, any medieval action movie. Yeah. It, he's he's pretty tough. Like, I, I, I bowed after I beat him. It was good. And, uh... We're the opponent, even though I tried to cheese you at every turn. Oh, yeah. When I invade other places, there's two people. Um, because you can only usually invade if a Sinister Bell is rung, and the, the areas in which it is rung naturally are few, but the areas in which, um, you know, they can summon people and then have that Sinister Bell get rung, that's pretty much everywhere. So I went to Kiner's Castle, and I got double-teamed a lot. And when I do that, then it's fair play to use all the enemies and stealth and every single sort of cheap trick in the book. To, to make things clear for you as to what kind of player I am when I do PvP, I was, uh, I did the rat dungeons in Dark Souls 2. Yeah, I could have guessed that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Belt hell for life, bitch. I like fair duels, but sometimes I really like unfair duels. And to make it as unfair as possible. I'll be honest. I like doing proper duels where everyone bows at the beginning. Yeah, I had. I tried I, to do that once. I tried to do that once in a recording that we've lost, by the way, yeah. so that's not going to be shown. But uh, yeah, that didn't, that didn't work out so well. I, I did some proper duels uh, in Dark Souls <clears> 2 <throat> when I was with the Dragon Covenant. That was great. I had a lot of fun with that. But I was surprisingly good at PvP when it, when it came down to just straight up fighting. And uh, I had the executioner set on, which means I got the big golden thing on my head, so I look like a weird pyramid head, like they a devout the monks pyramid thing head. Back. No, 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 no. It's not like that. Okay. Um, it's the executioner set. It's called the Gold Ardeo. It costs sixty thousand blood echoes. It's like the most expensive piece of armor you can get that I've seen so far. It well, looks technically, kind of... the most expensive thing is stuff that costs insight because that's not a currency. But no, but you can get that pretty easily just by PvP and helping people. But to give you an image of what it looks like, it it's kind of fun. It's a conical gold helmet. Yeah, that's fucking pyramid head. Yeah, I feel like a devout pyramid head when I wear it. Yeah, that's just a regular pyramid head. Yeah, and yeah, I got my big holy blade and everything. <clears throat> so that was fun. Yeah. Um, also, other day, my boss comes to me while I'm on my break, and she's like, hey, can you go get some soy sauce? Because I want to make some fried rice. So I decided that screw actually driving there. It's just next door, so I ran. Okay. And... I kind of pulled a muscle in my leg, because I, uh, yeah. Are you Kenshi? <laughs> no, Kenshi doesn't get little wussy injuries like pulling muscles in his legs. Kenshi tears things and has to, has to sit around for weeks yeah, at a time. I think I might have twisted my leg a little bit wrongly while I was running on some terrain, and it's fine now, but it made the rest of that night just bad. Not fun at all. Um, oh, also, uh, me and some of my friends from my other Skype group, we decided to let's play, uh, the Honeypot female route a little bit, just to see what it'd be like. It's the uh, exact there were, same, I'd imagine. Yeah, I know, I know, but it, there were seven people in that call. Oh, at well, one yeah. Point. So. That's a lot of people just talking over each other. Um, surprisingly, we didn't talk over each other <clears> much. But it got really out of hand, and I loved it. Everybody was like, we need to get Nikki before this session ends. 
She's the universal waifu, I take it? Yeah, so we just said screw She's it. She's the game of girls, so basically. Yeah. We just said screw it, so we just basically ignored everyone else. And we we got like Momo re- on the first day. I'll rephrase. She is the antisocial, uh, socially incompetent, and thus doesn't really get the fact that you're hitting on her and playing it from the very beginning, and she's a gamer girl. So basically, dream girl for any shut-in, social recluse, yeah, basically. kind of pathetic excuse for human life person that exists, who is pretty much the entire audience for the game, myself included, so yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> So that was a lot of fun. I'm probably going to put that up on my personal channel uh, this coming week. I'm going to edit down a lot because there were times when we were all talking over each other. But there were some pretty great moments. I mean, we got people from everywhere, so it was fun. Um, I also got new shoes. It's the last. I think it's the last pair of shoes my parents will ever buy me. New shoes. Are they new bad shoes. or just like you don't want to have other people support you anymore or something. Uh, because he's 20 years old and it's kind of silly for his parents to still be buying shoes for him. Yeah, I was going to buy myself new shoes anyways, but we ended up going in there because um, it's my sister's birthday and we were going to surprise her, but we had extra time before that. So we went to like uh, the shoe place and I was like, Dad, I need new shoes. And I managed to get uh, convince him to get me some nice uh, $75 shoes. So... That's the last pair of shoes I ever want anybody to ever buy me. And the last pair of shoes I probably will ever get anyone to buy me. So I made sure they were oh. nice. Uh, and, yeah, I kept thinking of the new shoes song that Kenji kept singing during Honey Pop. <laughs> it's great. Well, I left an impression. Also, I was watching your guys' uh, Dark Souls LP today. Mm-hmm. You guys had, like, four people. How? Did Scholar first send up the amount of people we can summon? Yes. Uh, we had three summons, so apparently yes. Yeah, they oh brought it from gosh. two to three. That's unfair. <clears throat> yeah, kind of. That's it makes literally game-breaking. Well, in fairness, previously there were bosses that were just a pain. They asked that you couldn't beat without summons, so the fact that they increased the amount of people you can summon, well, that's basically how the game turned out anyway. Yeah. But that pursuer fight was sad. Which one? The one where you guys, like, you had two people just launching spells at him while you kept switching back and forth and trying to hit you guys. It was just, oh man, it was just so ridiculously unfair for the boss. That is is how most fights with any more than one summon turn out. It's just a clusterfuck of the boss trying to decide who to attack and then being aggro to somebody else and... Yeah, mm-hmm. I've I never summon twice. I only if I do need a help on a boss because it's unfair or something. I summon once, and I can't believe some people will summon three times. Well, you fucking hot shit. Yeah, I am. Thank you for acknowledging that. Man, I feel like a jerk today. Awesome. Yeah, a little bit. Mm. <laughs> nice for the role to change from me to you. So you know, I got a break. Hmm. All right. Well, no, I, think... I don't. I don't want to break. I want to be. I want to be an asshole. <laughs> Stop being an asshole, Zero. You're stealing my thing. Should I go back and be nice again? Yeah. I don't think nice was your thing. I think sad and mopey was your thing. No. Pretty much. <laughs> Screw you guys. I hate. Oh. Uh, I I don't think you could have timed that better, Slice. So that was great. <clears throat> All right. Well, I'm done with my week. Okay. Uh, Ken. Go. Okay, my leg is finally to the point where I can start doing double jumps. Sure it is. So I'm pretty much good. It still hurts, but it doesn't give out anymore. So uh, <sighs> just a matter of mind over matter at this point. Yeah. Okay, taking all bets. How long before Ken is in a wheelchair? Um, uh, I don't like I this give bet. it a few weeks. A week? Screw you too. <laughs> I give it uh, next January. Screw you as well. I give him like I don't know a few years. You're okay with that, Ken? I'm not. You o- sound okay with I'm that. not okay with that at all. I'm really actually pissed about it. Because <laughs> it's true. No. What implies that I would be in a wheelchair? The fact you that you... you repeatedly say that. 
I mean, not. I mean, I probably am, but not anytime soon. I mean, like in fifteen or twenty years. Sure. Okay. You know, back. You know, at the point where I won't need to walk around and be athletic anymore. Continue. All right. So that's going on. That's good. And let's see. Uh, oh yeah, you fuckers made me start playing Dark Souls two again. Yeah, we did. And oh, cool like that. I was just doing that. They were listening to me get my ass beat by the pursuer while we were getting ready to do this podcast. Yeah, it was hilarious. I was making fun of him for it. Yeah, yeah. they were because they're dicks like that. Yeah, they're Dark Souls snobs. Yeah, I'm. I'm not a snob. I'm not a snob. Slice is a snob. You play any longer than two weeks, you turn into a snob. It's what happens. I'm not. Well, then you're not playing right. There you go. See? All right. <laughs> All right yeah. Let's see. In addition to that, I had my job review. Apparently, I'm awesome. Yeah. That's not really a surprise. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm getting producer training to actually be running these fucking shows. Ooh. So, oh, yeah. Wow. But I'm still part time. Uh, oh. Oh. Well, hopefully that'll change. Yeah. And besides, being producer means pay rise, so fuck yeah. Yeah. But for now, I'm still listed as an assistant producer, so the only pay rise I got was like 30 cents. Well, it's something. 30 cents an hour, I assume. On the plus, yeah. On the plus side, though, uh, because my job interview took so long, like this shit was supposed to have been done in January, I have... Mm -hmm. Well over three months of back pay coming to me. Oh, awesome. Huh. Yeah. I was supposed to get a raise no matter what with my um, review as long as it was positive. And since it was supposed to happen in January, that would have meant that I would have begotten, I would have started getting the pay raise in January when I was supposed to get the review. Since that didn't happen, and since it wasn't my fault, I get back pay. Yeah. All of the money I was supposed to have made with the raise... I'm now going to make it one point in time on a check next month. Okay, so is this three extra full paychecks, or is this the extra money, It's so the extra 30 cents an hour, basically? The extra 30 cents an hour that I was supposed to have made this entire time is going to be tacked on to one of my checks. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah that's not so bad. So I'm going to shit a brick when that happens. I'm going <clears> to <throat> completely forget about it and shit a brick when I finally get that check. Mm. So got that to look forward to. Yeah. And, um, pretty, oh yeah, one more thing. Mm. I had to fix the starter in my car in a Walmart parking lot. That was great. Wow. Oh, great. Yeah, apparently my, my cars always seem to be the ones that break down. No one else mm. does do that. It's annoying. I think a lot of other people's cars break down. Well, uh, no one ours in my, break down constantly. No one in my household. Mine is the only one that I have to constantly call people for advice and Google shit on how to fix in the parking lot and spend hours there uh, doing it. Okay. That play. Yeah. It's annoying. And, uh, oh yeah, I forgot last week I updated uh, Naruto Great Clan Days. Forgot I did that. <laughs> yep. And, uh, that's pretty much it. Stuff's everything's coming up Kenshi right now, I guess. Except for your car. Well, that's a, I fix the starter, so it's fine now. Ah, for now. Yeah. For now. <laughs> Something else will fuck up in like two weeks, if that. Mm -hmm. I believe in your car. I don't. If I don't believe mm -hmm. in it, nobody will. Considering ours is broken, like, my first car is now a hunk of junk. <clears throat> And it's, it hasn't even been, like, two years. So, I don't have a lot of faith in vehicles. Hmm. I'm depressed that my thing is that I'm moping and sad. <laughs> we yeah. have... If, if that's not our only vehicle, so it's not depressing, it's just annoying. I think Slicer missed Zero's joke. I assume it was a joke. Yeah. He's mopey because his thing is being mopey. Mm-hmm. Depressing. Mine's a different character. Sad. 
Yeah. Anyway, uh, my week. I went to fucking pictures last week. Yeah. I went to see fucking Avengers 2. Still can't talk about it. I can't talk, I can't spoil it, no. Though, I will say, I don't really need to spoil it. Pretty much everything that happens in the film has already been spoiled by trailers and interviews. Yeah, they went nuts Lit- with that advertising. Literally stuff. everything. I, I was not surprised by a single plot point. I've been trying to save myself from being spoiled. So I haven't been looking at how any su- interviews. And I've only seen... How, sec- how successful were you? I... I'm pretty successful. I mean, I already know that it's just going to be Ultron attacking and everything. That's all I really need to know. I mean, I know the comic book shit, so there's really not a lot that you're going to spoil in that movie for me. Mm. Well, I could probably, but I'm not going to. You can try. There's a thing that happens that I am entirely certain doesn't happen in the comics. Mm. Okay. It's yeah. just not discussed, at least. Like I say, I can't spoil It's not even out in your country yet. Yeah, yeah I know, not. please. <laughs> it is going to be three weeks before I can actually talk about it. Even then, you know, I'd prefer to not, because it's going to be a while before I can see it, probably. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Okay, uh, what else was the, uh, what's that? Oh, yeah, uh, no, I don't care about that, and I don't think anyone else does. Um, (laughs) Arrow. I remember when it was a, a good show. Yeah. Fans are terrible, terrible things. What do you mean? There is a character on that show. Her name is Felicity. Oh, that sounds familiar. She is a Hollywood nerd. Yeah. Which means she is a nerd and she is incredibly pretty. But they put glasses on her and she's a nerd. So, yeah. She became super popular. And then pairing her with Oliver Queen became super popular. Of course. And... And now it's Pretty canon. much the entirety of season three has been a crappy will they won't they thing, and it overshadowed the plot. And her character for the entire season has been backflipping between different moods and bitching at the protagonist over every single decision that he makes. I can't tell whether it's trying to appease the fans or to piss them off until they hate the character again so that they can get rid of her. If it's the latter, it's totally working. Yeah. So I'm starting to lose interest in that show, unfortunately. That's a shame, because it was, it was very good. You have Rachel Ghoul in it, and it's cool. It's... Is that how you spell his, or pronounce his name? Yes. De- depends on what part of uh, what country you are from. So apparently, the there are certain parts of Arabic-speaking countries that would pronounce it Raz, and some would pronounce it Raish. I yeah, pronounce yeah. it Raish because it sounds cooler. Either way, I think it's Raish El Hul rather than Ghul. Yeah, I thought I always, it was Raz I, I always heard it because of Ra- Raz. Did they say Raz in the video games? Uh, I think Batman calls him Raz. Yeah. I'm going to go with Batman on this. Batman's pretty much wrong for the most part. I don't but, care. Yeah. He's Batman. Or he's just doing it to piss off Raish. Which seems like a thing he might do. Uh, so, final thing. Does everyone remember that thing about Skyrim having paid mods that we were talking about? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, that happened. You know, I didn't like it before, and then Steam claimed 75% of the profits, and then I just hated everything about it. Yep. Not even that. Steam claims 75% of the profits and has a completely hands-off policy. Now, I watched the Jimquisition this week, and uh, 
there's some elements of this entire situation that I didn't consider. One of which being, if you pay for mods, then if it doesn't work, buyer beware, basically. You kind of expect them to work if you pay money for them, yeah. But because Valve has a hands-off policy, that's not really a requirement, and you might be unlucky enough to find out you can't get a refund for that shit. Uh, and then there is also the fact that if a game gets patched, that's going to break a significant number of those mods that you paid money for. And if the modder has decided to move on to other things, or has made the money that they're going to make from those mods and thus doesn't care about them anymore, then those mods are broken. And your money is wasted. Unless you want to literally re-download a pirated version of the game that's a previous version. Yep. Which probably wouldn't work, because Steam Workshop is the modding tool that is required. Yeah, this is a shit show. It's like a really bad joke. I thought it just seems like something somebody would try to do for April Fool's to get people to riled up. A little bit, yeah. But nope, it's a real thing. And Valve and Bethesda are taking money from it. And everyone else suffers including the modders that are going to be fighting between themselves, which has already started, by the way, and the customers who really liked having not to pay for mods and now having to suddenly decide that they have to pay for mods. Uh, yeah. And the developers, who now have to try and figure out how this shit is going to work from here on out. Because they're the ones that are going to have to save face when this all blows up. Take, you know, take the biggest example we have right now, Skyrim. That received a lot of pre-release updates, or post-release, rather, mm -hmm. just to fix it. I mean, it's a Bethesda game. They're full of bugs. It happens. It's a fact of life. But if somebody tries to make a mod in the first, I don't know, month of the game being out and it breaks, then you've got a problem. They're going to complain mm -hmm. to the developers, and they're going to be like, what did you expect, you moron? But they can't exactly say that, so they got to try to appease them or something, and yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I don't even know how I want this situation to be resolved. I'm not entirely sure how it could be resolved. Bloodily. It's possible. Of course, modders have no idea what to price things as at this point. No, because I, I saw a fucking, I saw an armor set that was one pound fifty. They'd probably treat it like the DLC prices for Oblivion, just yeah, a few dollars. Yeah, that's nope, not 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 no one's gonna pay that. When there's free options, no, no one's gonna care. When there aren't free options they're still going to do far, far worse than regular DLC will. Oh, yeah. You'd be surprised how many people would just not care and just deal with the base game. Mm-hmm. <sighs> and, of course, there's always going to be uh, alternative methods to get these mods working. You can guarantee that there's going to be mod piracy in the near future. Oh, yeah. That's going to happen. I'd be a supporter of that. I'm not supportive of this at all. I will take every excuse to pirate this shit. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's a very annoying situation. But, yeah. Well, that's the you know addendum to that whole topic, I guess. Uh, Slicer, you're next. All right. Um, Last, brother. Not a terribly long week, actually. I've only got three things. Um, for anyone watching Ray's stream, uh, Ray from Achievement Hunter, previously from Achievement mm -hmm. Hunter anyway, he um, pimps Baja Blast Mountain Dew a lot as good. It's I've seen it being compared to, or being compared, explained as uh, Mountain Dew and Gatorade combined, and that's exactly what it tastes like, and not in a good way. Sangrita Blast, Blast is better. 
Sure. Never heard that one, but all right. It's the red one. There's a red one. Now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I have, like, a thing I went to Walmart to get when my car messed up was soda because I didn't have any. And I saw that these, yeah. and I saw that those two new ones were for the cheap. And I was like, huh, they're, they're super cheap compared to everything else. Why the hell not? It's Mountain Dew. What am I going to do? Not, if I don't drink it, so what? And I'm drinking them both. And I just killed all the song Greed and Blast. And I still have Baja Blast. It's not bad, but it's not really awesome. It's got an almost tart flavor at the, like, the aftertaste. Like, it's pretty I minor, know, but I don't like it. I know that taste from somewhere, but I don't know where the hell I've tasted it before. Lime Gatorade. Mm. Yeah. So, that's probably the last time I'll be getting that. I have discovered that uh, getting a 12-pack of Mountain Dew cans just to have in my room is amazing. Isn't yeah, it? It's pretty great. It's pretty yeah. sweet, dude. <laughs> It's just, yeah, whenever I'm feeling tired, I just grab a can, and there you go. I'm awake. We're all in our 20s. We eat <laughs> like children. I don't, I I run on a 48-hour schedule, okay? I'm awake for a day, and I'm asleep the next day. Yeah. Or part of the next day, or whatever. I had a takeaway last night. You know why? I don't want to do the dishes. I have no self-control. Right. Oh, I guess, I guess there is four things then. Um, hmm? it's Our local Chinese place closed down a few months ago, and I've Ooh. had this massive craving for sesame chicken. Yeah. So I'm just going to learn how to make sesame chicken and make yeah. it. It's going to be terrible, but I'm going to make it, and I'm going to get that better point? at it, and it's going to be good. I hope you have a wok. I imagine woks are important in making Chinese food. Yeah, we have large pans that are similarly shaped, but it's probably not going to be the same. If not, I can always buy one. They're not that expensive. Hmm. Uh, now, anyway. On to actual things. Uh, I watched Den Machi, which is the short version of Are You Seriously Picking Up Girls in a Dungeon? I think is the full title. It, Yeah. I have never seen an anime try to push a waifu so hard. Which one? Dan Machi. It's, I don't even have a link on hand, but I can copy the name of it at least. It's pretty much your basic RPG setting with a single dungeon that everyone goes into, various floors. It. I don't really know how that works, but they get magic crystals, they can make covenants effectively with gods. It's pretty good, but uh, the goddess that the main character is in a familiar, familial, I don't know the name of it, is very waifu-like. She has a ribbon underneath her bust that every time she lifts her arms, her breasts just go crazy. And I, they're trying really hard. When you say crazy, are we talking uh, fucking Dead or alive physics here. That's what crazy implies to me. Not that crazy, not Iken level or anything, but it's it's pretty intense, I guess. Or well, <laughs> basic etchy, I suppose. Um, I don't even really know. I don't watch a whole lot of etchy stuff because if I wanted that, I'd watch porn. It's like there should be a boing sound effect. Yes. Okay. And it's not even... It, it's not even... Attention is not drawn to it. It just happens most of the time. So I don't know how to deal with that. Otherwise, the the story and stuff is uh, progressing fairly well. The main character is interesting. I wish he was more driven. But... Or, well, not driven. Um, what's the word to use? Ambitious. As a goal, he is ambitious. He intends to be the strongest. Specific, he has a specific one in mind, but I don't know. Or more aware of his surroundings, I guess. It's got that base, a generic anime thing where the main female likes him, but he does not acknowledge it at all, or anyone that expresses any interest in him. 
Yeah. So that's that's my weird rambling of that. Uh, Casey, you may want to unhook your headphones for the next little bit. Why? Uh, text you when we get back to things, because the story might weird you out. I'm fine. What? I'm fine. All right. There's uh. So I get moths in my room all the time. It's just mm-hmm. they're oh, God, around. It's one of I have my windows okay. open. They're <laughs> flying around. Mm-hmm. They're pretty great, except for when they land at my lamp, and then I just see a bunch of dust or wing dust or whatever fly up and a sizzling <laughs> sound. <laughs> they're, just, they're just hugging the light bulb, and it's hilarious. But that's not the point. Uh, last night, I saw something flying around my ceiling. I'm like, oh, it's another moth. Cool, it's been a while. And uh, I look closer, and it's it's thin. It's, it's not fuzzy, and it's black and white, or black and yellow. Uh-oh. There was a wasp in my room. I'm- Oh yeah, now it's a party. And I didn't, I didn't have anything to squish it with, so I just let it be, and it just flew around, and it got close to me. It landed on my monitor, and I didn't know how to deal with it. Yeah, I crushed it with a two by four this morning, but you know, there you go. last <laughs> night it was, it was something. You've done a service to mankind as a whole. I know, right? So yeah. Now find the nest. I, Burn it. Burn it all. I don't think there is one. It was just a single wasp. They never work alone, Slicer. Checked they, where they would go. I mean, it might be in one of the barns out here, but at that point, we were not really supposed to go in there because it's not ours. And so we just have to deal with it, I guess. Yeah, our landlord sucks, by the way. Mm. And which... I guess we'll lead into the fifth thing. There was a there was a house for rent on the way to one of the towns nearby, but uh, it, it's better than the place we have now. But one, it's not by much, and two, the landlord would live 200 yards away. So one, we couldn't have pets. Two, we couldn't light fires, which we burn our garbage, so we couldn't do that anymore. We'd have to pay for a garbage truck and be a whole thing. And uh, what was it? Oh, we shoot. He wouldn't want us to shoot guns. And that's a problem, because we have fun doing that. Go America. Yeah. And that that's it. So it didn't work out, unfortunately. Is that everything? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, cool. I, for, I forgot one thing. I watched the whole season of Daredevil. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello? Yeah. Sorry, it all went quiet. What were you saying? It was super duper sweet. Yeah, it is. I I'm <sighs> surprised they killed off Ben Urich in the first season, though. Uh oh yeah, the reporter guy. Yeah, I'm surprised they did that so quick. You totally just spoiled it for everyone else in the podcast. Can anyone else even hear me? They killed off some reporter guy, I guess. I have no context for who these people are. I didn't start watching it yet. Hmm. Where's Zero, then? Wouldn't hear him at all. Oh, here I am. (laughs) (laughs) There, I didn't spoil anything. I've already seen all of Daredevil. Oh, cool. In that case, you spoiled it first. I I just had my mic muted on accident, so I was trying to talk. Oh. Uh, Yeah, it's a really good show. Everyone should go watch it. Literally everyone. Right now. I mean, after the podcast, but right now, yeah, go watch Dead Owl. Anyway, uh, yeah, I guess we're moving on to our first topic. Then our first topic is red flags. So you're reading a story, and a thing happens, and you're like, oh, I don't like that thing, but I'll, mm, I'll keep reading. That's just... That's not a thing I want to see, and it's worrying how you're taking this, but I'll see where you're going with it. Hope it pans out in a way that I like. That's a red flag. <laughs> so, what do you consider red flags, gentlemen? 
Hmm. Um, sometimes they have, at the end of a chapter, they have a cut to a shadowy organization, and it's the big bad <sighs> talking, and it's, just, fuck you, stop that, stop it. It's just stupid. Yeah. Yeah, Zero, don't do that. Zero did that once. <laughs> yeah. He's not listening again, that's awesome. Alright, uh, yeah, that's a pretty good one. again, I muted my mic. But yeah, you need to stop doing that. Sorry, right? sorry. I, I do that, like, at the end of, like, like the arc, though. Not for a very long time. I, I don't do it every chapter. That's more forgivable. I'm okay with that, just not every chapter. Yeah, it's just like, because, you know, I want, sometimes I have something to say. I think, you know, it's, I, I try not to do it too much. I think... Earlier, me wanted to like just loved the idea of writing that, but uh, I still restrained myself enough to the point where I think it's forgivable. Mm. Here's how I think you do that: you do the shadowy organization thing, doing that thing, then you foreshadow a super secret plan that they're going to be doing. Then you have that plan occur. Then you can do the shadowy organization thing. Until that happens, no. Mm. Anyway, other red flags. This is probably going to be overly sensitive, but um, a character showing up. <laughs> that's a little bit... Yeah, that's... Let okay. me explain this. Like, please. Yeah, please. Okay, you have a Harry Potter fic just progressing normally, and suddenly Ron shows up. It's an AU story or whatever, and he's not part of anything. He just shows up. Oh, I know what you're talking about. A character being there just because they were in the series in the first place, even though they have nothing to do with the actual story. You just don't know how to exist with them not being there. That as well. And also it can lead to just the author try to pulling try to pull canon pairings just because. Random OCs that they put a little bit too much effort into. You can tell right away, yeah. Yeah. That's another one. And you're like, that, that's very specific. You're going very specific on this one character. You haven't been very specific on these other characters, but this character, you really want to describe them. I, I think you. Yeah. You've been describing this character for the past half a page. Why? Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's, a, that's a problem with writing fan fiction sometimes. Because you don't need to describe the characters that already exist, so that just makes the OC stand out more because yeah. well, people need to know what they look like. But I, I, I get into the mm. habit of describing uh, most characters that show up that I haven't necessarily had in, had them introduced yet. Like even if they're canon characters and you totally know what they look like if you know their names, mm. I tend to describe them and then say the names or something along that line, just so it can be fair and everybody can get a description. But. uh it, yeah, if you're describing somebody new, it, it's, you can get lost in that really easily. And if they're an OC, then screw you. Yeah, as a, an addendum two slices thing, having a character show up because they're a canon character, having them show up early. I think we mentioned this once before, way back when. With like, hey, you're having the main character be introduced to this whatever's going on way before it actually happens in canon. But then you just introduce the characters that early as well. Apropos of nothing. It does kind of lose its point at that point. Again, I bring up the example of, hey, Issei, let's go to this fucking shrine where there's this girl who is half fallen angel. For example. Is that a canon example? No. How I don't think so. Meet her in canon, Zero? Anyway. What? Uh, the whole becoming a devil thing, that's how he meets her. How does he meet who? Well, no, they knew each other beforehand, right? Did they actually, Zero? Issei and Akino? Did they actually know each other? Uh, no. You say Akino? Know. No. He met Akino uh, through Rias. There you go. 
So yeah, that's just a thing that so many fans do in their fiction stories that, you know, if you didn't actually read the books or watch the anime, you might actually believe it's true. It's not. Uh, I can understand maybe maybe him encountering Asia a little bit earlier. How? She was in Italy. Yeah, but you, you'd have to go out of your way to make that, but it could be entirely possible that you know, he ran into her in some other weird distorted timeline, I don't know. But Akino is flickable family vacation. The yeah. Dursley's going to Japan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot too. Or they go to New York and meet Tony Stark for whatever reason. Yeah. What? Well, that one makes sense. That's kind of a business hub, but Mm. And it's you know English. We lost Kenshi. Seems like. Yeah, he's he's coming back. I think. I hope. I mean, you could just say, "Hey, it's an AU," and Ozzy's flight got there earlier. I mean, that's all you have to do to make them meet earlier. Yeah, but like at childhood or whatever. Yeah. That just bothers me. Uh, any others? Of I the know two there gentlemen are more, that are still here. but I can't really think of any. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I can call out the ones that a reviewer called out to me in my fic. Sure. Uh, protagonist becoming rich and political and powerful or whatever. Oh, they got him back. <laughs> they can. Yeah. Oh, when the protagonist yeah. just gets rich right in the beginning. Super rich, so they don't need to worry about money. And then they're just... Yeah, that's all. Yeah... Funny thing about that, people that call that out in Harry Potter fix, that happened in canon, it did. ladies and gentlemen. That he had a vault full of gold. That was a literal scene in the fucking. Yeah, he. he did. No one remembers yeah. that. Okay. Um, I was reading. Um, somebody did a whole like. Uh, it was the. It was the unlimited Godsling works or whatever. The. Fate Say Night and Campion crossover. Good fic, but in the very beginning, it's like, oh, hey, and by the way, he killed, like, Hades on his way to the main character area, and now he can summon out gemstones and everything, so he has infinite money. It's underworld. Mm. And money. I understand you don't want to worry about money, but... Uh... Yeah, the whole a... not worrying... The not worrying about money thing is a way to get that crap out of the way so more important things can go on. It's not a plot in itself. Um. For example, with this ring, does that in the first, like, chapter. Yeah. The yeah. protagonist self-insert just goes up into space and mines an asteroid, and then he never has to worry about money again, so he can worry about the main things that he's worried about, which are survival and keeping humanity safe. Yeah, and this other example of him just being Hades, that was also in the first chapter, I think, but he didn't really write the full fight or anything. He just didn't know what happened. Hmm. Which was kind of upsetting for me, because I kind of want to see that fight. If you're going to choose somebody to fight, and you're going to choose a fight to show. Hmm. But, yeah, money, instantly getting money, um, if it's for a good reason, I can see it. I mean, say for example, Persona 3, since I know that, you have Elizabeth traveling with you, and she just handles the expenses. She has, like, infinite money that's established in canon, so. Mm. Oh, God, those fucking wallets. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, you're good with that, but if it's just like, oh, hey, look, now we never have to worry about money. What a coincidence. Hmm. There's a difference between making it a plot point so that you can get it out of the way and move on to more important things, or making it a plot point so everyone can be super happy for the rest of their lives. Yeah. The latter is probably a bad plot. Uh, let's see, other red flags. Hmm. Let's, let's go with one more so that we can... Okay, I have one. Mm -hmm. When you start with an author's note yelling about ships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, don't tell me about those in advance. I don't... 
Yeah, if you already know how it's going to turn out, then what's the point of reading it? And, and don't, 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 don't fill your summary with just X, 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 saying all your ships right at the beginning, because that's no fun. Nobody mm. wants to read that. No. Some people, if they're that obsessed with shipping, then they probably do want to read that. But Yeah, but I don't like that, because really, I want to find out what relationships you're going to do. I want to find out that type, those types of things. I don't want you just presented to me all on a platter in the beginning. Like if I want to read a ship like that, I'll, I'll read a, 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 a pairing-specific ship of just those two characters. I'm not going to read a full story with all the ships you want right at the beginning of yeah. established. Here's the thing about like fan fiction shipping. If you're just saying right out front that these ships are going to happen, then your readers will be based around the people that wanted that ship to happen because of how it happened in canon. But if you don't do that, then you can have the readers find out that they want those ships to happen because you're making them happen. In other words, you're developing the character's relationship in a way that makes the readers want to see that relationship come to fruition. It's how ships form in the first place. Yeah. And if you can do that, then that is a very good sign of how you're doing as a writer. Mm-hmm. if you can do that and make people really believe it and want it, especially if they're not really a fan of that ship in the first place. Yeah, it's funny that sometimes while you're writing, you can also create accidental ships you weren't planning on that can work out surprisingly well. So, yeah. I don't, I, I don't think it's good to just label your ships and restrict yourself like that. Mm-hmm. But likewise for readers, red flags, yes, they can be warning signs of how a fic is going to turn sour, but that doesn't necessarily mean that by itself it makes it a bad fic. This was something I discussed with the reviewer I was talking about, that's why I brought the topic up. Um, They were basically dumping my fic because... It had the Harry getting rich and supposedly entering politics. And they didn't want to see that, so they dumped the fic. Incidentally, my fic has absolutely nothing to do with that. It really doesn't. It just, it just looked like it did. So just because you see something you think, oh, this could go badly, doesn't mean it will go badly. Also, that's so, extra sad because that's a... Any fic he grant he gets a lordship would have that similarity. That's it. That's. Mm-hmm. It's not like he commented on sitting in a seat at the Wizen Gamut or whatever. It's just he got a lordship. Pretty much. Yeah, I basically just set up that whole scenario so that he could die for the first time in the game. So. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's pretty much what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway. So yeah, that's the first uh, topic done, pretty much. Yeah, Don't let the red flags make you drop a fic when, you know, it might not even turn out that bad. It's a warning sign. It is not a, you know, stop, bad, evil thing sign, I guess. I don't fucking know. Words escape me at the moment. Yeah. Uh, I, I have, a, before we move on, I have a better example of what I, I said. Uh, okay. In Actually, in that fic that I was kind of, sort of, basing that suggested on uh neville comes up to the sorting hat and the sorting hat's like oh it's one of the prophesized or whatever and i'm okay fine he means the canon prophecy that's all right it's a bit on the nose but fine Mm -hmm. then ron comes up and he says it's another one of the six and why ron has not been part of the story until now i mean he stopped by on the train thing but he quickly left because he didn't like neville and neville was in the cart the cart beforehand and so it, it's just, it's kind of giving away that Ron is going to be a major character when he hasn't until now. Like 150,000 words into the story. Okay. I think we probably could have used a little bit more context, but we're going to move on anyway. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it's all right. Uh, next topic is superpowers. Can get it out of your system. You know what I'm going to say? 
Yes, I do. That's why you're going to say it right now so you can get it out of your system. Okay. Go. The best superpower. The superpower that everyone needs to take note of and address as the power of choice, if you were ever given the option, is the power to grow hair on any surface. Sure. It's, God damn it, I hate myself. It's still funny. <laughs> it's great. You can, I still want to see Mullet House. God damn it. You can put any hair do you like on anything. You can give your car a mohawk or something. You know? I'd be okay with that. Mullet car would be a lot less, like, interesting. I, don't... I could put a little hmm. afro on the hilt of all of Zero's swords. <laughs> That'd be great. I'd like that. Oh, you can choose what kind of hair. So you could have straight hair or curly hair, frizzy hair. All of my boots can be furry boots. Oh my gosh, <laughs> guys, I just found the TV tropes page for the ugly barnacle. What? The story by Patrick, the ugly barnacle, has a TV tropes page. Wow. It's very... The, the amount of tropes it has is staggering. Are you going to link? Yes, I don't know please, look actually... at this. What is this? Lias is... Really? <laughs> <laughs> the Ugly oh Barnacle is a classic short story in the Pacific literary canon, the authorship of which is generally attributed to one Peter F. Patrick, then using the pen name Patrick Starr. <laughs> A number of tantalizing details are left out. We aren't told, for instance, how or why everyone dies, nor whether or not that includes the barnacle itself. <laughs> Similarly, the barnacle's relationship with the rest of the cast are quite vague. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Tropes, so affection, so parody, ambiguous situation, all just a dream, the aloner, and man group proud, antagonist how anti-hero, anyone can die. Apocalypse how? Apocalypse wow. Kill them all. Artifact of doom. Twist the bad juggernaut. <laughs> Nobody was capable of stopping the barnacle, thus everyone died. Chekhov's gun. Early in the story, Patrick mentions that the barnacle is ugly. The barnacle is ugly, just kills everyone later on. Cosmic horror story. <laughs> Machinima. In Super Scribonauts, one can type in nuclear ugly barnacle, which creates an ugly barnacle, and then everyone dies. <laughs> the fuck, dude? Uh... Furry confusion. The barnacle in the story is presumably anthropomorphic, yet bar ordinary barnacles exist in the universe the story is set in. This is never explicitly stated in the story, however, so it is currently unknown whether the barnacle is anthropomorphic or indeed if he is, in fact, the only remaining barnacle in the story's universe. A million is a statistic. Everyone dies. Villain protagonist. Yeah. Possibly. Informed deformity. We're told the protagonist is ugly and we're told the ramifications of his ugliness, but it's never made clear exactly what features he has to make him so ugly. Fridge brilliance. It's possible that if we were told, we would die. I think I found the best one. Nobody poops. <laughs> Either played straight or averted, depending on whether you count the emptying of bowels after death. What? <laughs> I can't tell whether this is the best or worst thing TV Tropes has ever done. Sword of Damocles. The thread of the rock was enough to stop anyone from doing anything ever. <laughs> no hugging, no kissing. <laughs> Story features no romance at all and instead focuses on the tragedy of everyone dying. Thank you, God. Truth and in television. In real life, barnacles are quite ugly. Not like the killer one, but their repulsive anatomy and lack of any identified features, including eyes or even a face, was obviously a fitting inspiration for something as exceedingly hideous as the ugly barnacle. Protagonist title. <laughs> oh, crap. Presumably the thoughts of everyone before they die. <laughs> Why are Walking wasteland. This? Technically inverted. Know. Barnacles can't walk. Self-made orphan. The barnacle's parents were not sheltered from the slaughter. <laughs> that's, a, that's a brutal way to word it. You cannot grasp the true form. Well, you can't do it and survive. Okay. Done. Thank you, Zero. We're closing the tab now. <laughs> Topic was superpowers. <laughs> okay. That's, an, that's a superpower. The ugly barnacle's ugliness is a superpower.
a world-ending power. Everybody who looks at you dies. What are we doing? We never even got superpowers. To what is this about exactly? <laughs> this is about superpowers and their implementations and what's good and what's bad. Since we've been dealing with this recently, how about we start off with Hero Academia and its use of superpowers? Basically, everyone gets them. Everybody gets a power. Everybody in the club getting tipsy. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure so, what this topic's specifically about. So, okay, what do we think of the, There's a lot of different ways of doing superpowers. Like, you can have a certain select group of people suddenly and inexplicably get superpowers. Or you could have a certain event that triggers a certain subset of the population to get superpowers. Or you could have everybody getting superpowers. Or you could have one person getting superpowers. Mm -hmm. Alright. So, what do each of these scenarios offer as storytelling potential? Now, the one where everybody gets superpowers, or most people get superpowers, kind of puts the spotlight... Vast majority. Yeah, kind of puts the spotlight... Or sh I think it would, as, a, as far as the protagonist goes, on someone that doesn't have superpowers. Mm. Kind of. I don't. It's probably not yeah, that way. That's that's the way Hero Academia dealt with it, at least in the very first chapter. It basically abandons the concept after that, but you know, it's there for the very beginning. It sets the tone, and it tells it tells that story pretty well, actually, even in that just one chapter. Yeah, it establishes that that is... Then it basically becomes a story about overcoming disability, kind of. Which is one way to take it. Alternatively, in that scenario, you could take uh, the story in the direction of how society adjusts to that situation, assuming it's a new situation, like it is in here, Academia, how society manages to overcome the obstacle of, for example, bank robbery. That's a thing that pretty much anyone could do in a society where everyone has superpowers. It could, yeah. It wouldn't even be very hard. But in a yeah. society where everyone has superpowers, there's also like a billion people that could do something about it. Yeah, yeah precisely. Yeah. In those first few years where people emerge with superpowers, you have the problem of basically every police and military force being useless. Unless you take into account the whole superpower thing also affecting the police and military forces, in which case, like, I'm, basically, it becomes an interesting situation that is worth thinking about and seeing where it would go. And a creative mind could do a lot with that situation, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. A lot of stories to tell. Um, okay, how about... Let's go with the DC Marvel method. The... Very few people get superpowers out of very specific situations. Not necessarily connected, but possibly connected. Like uh, Heroes, for example, did a very similar thing, but they were connected. That show was so disappointing. But like, yeah, it was. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I still don't really know what we're debating on here. We're not debating, we're just seeing what... Uh, story concepts could be brought out of these different situations. I mean, because, you know, you see a lot of the same thing happening in, uh, whether in fan fiction or in professional media like comics and such, you see a lot of the same thing being done over and over and over again. So, you know, different new interesting takes on what you could do with the generic settings for I mean, that's, that's the stock standard kind of setting for it, so it's hard to say. I mean, at that point, it's mostly about the individual stories of the people that have the powers that you're focusing mm -hmm. on. Yeah. I guess it becomes what that specific person does with those powers. Yeah. And then it's basically just a character story from, from there on, which is basically what every superhero has been since ever. Right? Yeah. Pretty mm -hmm. much, yeah. 
Uh, yeah. Likewise, I guess the one person getting superpowers is similar ish. You see a lot more uh society hating the different and seeing things that are better than them as a threat by default. So you see a lot of those stories when you just have one person with superpowers. Yeah. Yeah, like um I was going to say Chronicle, but that's not really the same thing. I mean, there's shades of that that happen at the end, but mostly that was about uh, someone going a little bit mad with power. And it's basically a character story like any other. Mm. Um, hmm. But yeah, a lot of superpower stories tend to go with the you know, uh, power versus responsibility thing. Which... Yeah... I get it. It's uh, pretty important, but yeah. It's an odd thing that someone, out of entire random chance gets this amazing ability and then is not necessarily even expected but required to use that ability to help people? Is that a requirement for anyone else? Not really. I mean, you get an athletic fit build. Just, you know, look at the draw with genetics. You are a fit, healthy person. You're in good shape. You probably will always be in good shape because you have a great metabolism and your muscles are fucking awesome. Whatever. Are you then expected to be in the military or the police force? Because you could do the most good there? No. Is that how that works? the muscle part, you pretty much described me, so... Yeah. Yeah. I've never been pressured by anybody to do it, so I don't think so. But with superpowers, that feeling would be amplified. So if there's a, even a trace, then it's it's a lot more prevalent. Yeah. I mean, you take you take the villains with superpowers, for example. They supposedly have this responsibility as well. Yes. By the logic, they are expected to be using these powers for good and for the benefit of mankind, and if they are not doing that, then they are by default evil. Yes? So, is that why they're the villains? Is that the only reason they're the villains? So, say, for example, I don't know. Let's take... I can, I don't know, Spider-Man villains. Some of those, would some of those be quite so evil if they were not expected to be doing amazing things for the good of humanity? Would they be doing things for themselves that were entirely within the bounds of the law if that was an option for them? I don't see why not. I'm running through a quick list, it seems like a lot of them would be open to the idea. It's usually monetary concerns is why most Spider-Man villains are evil. It seems like, anyway. Yeah. So if you offer them, say, a job, a well-paying one, then yeah, they they usually give up their, you know, villainous stuff. You see, that's the thing about Marvel villains and Marvel characters in general. They generally have a more grounded mindset to why they do the stuff they do. DC characters are basically more black and white, good and evil. They tend A lot to... of them tend to be just insane. Yeah. yeah. Which is... Frankly, that's kind of just lazy writing. But that's just me. Well, the point of that... I, I always kind of imagine the point of that being that uh, it's the... It's not the villain's story. The hero is the important one here. So the villain, mm -hmm. their motivation is not really important. Except the villain tends to be the most interesting thing about a story. Nowadays, yes. But back then, that yeah, wasn't the okay. point. I'm, I'm talking about when they first came out, like way back when. It started as just the hero 
and that was the draw. The villains were just a thing of the week. The villains were just a gimmick to put the hero in some kind of jeopardy so that you could see them get out of it or find out more about them as they did such and such. Yeah, and the villains would just have a certain tick that would make them stand out from the other villains. Like, you had Calendar Man, you had... Kite Man. The fucking Tally Man, I guess. Uh, yeah. And it wasn't really important what that character was. And then here comes, let's say, Batman the Animated Series, and suddenly Mr. Freeze has a tragic backstory where his wife gets unplugged from life support. Yeah. It's compelling. Now it matters. It is. Yeah, now it matters to have good villains in your hero-centric stories, because then it just adds a whole other dimension to your story. We got a little bit off track. A bit, but... Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. But yeah, so... The whole idea of just a superhero is a superhero because he has superpowers. That's a little bit weak source to me. It is. That's just... Oh, I have these powers. I was chosen for a higher purpose. And that's pretty much every superhero story. I, almost. I would like a series where there is no good, there is no flat-out good and evil. Like, there's no one out robbing banks and trying to take over the world or anything with the superpowers. They're just living, and they just happen to be an asshole. You know, like an asshole in real life, they just have superpowers now. And you have a regular person. Right, like, yeah. yeah, just regular, living regular life with superpowers. There's assholes that will use their superpowers like an asshole, but not mm. necessarily evil about it, just being a dick. There are plenty of series where that would conceivably be a thing, but we never get to see it. It's never the focus. Mm. I just like to see how that would work. Well... You could argue a little bit, I guess. Harry Potter, the fucking twins. They're kind of assholes. Yeah. And they effectively have superpowers with magic. Though everyone they deal with also has magic, aka superpowers. So, playing field is still level. Hmm. Yeah, it would be interesting to see someone being a dick with superpowers when everyone else doesn't. When, well, most other people don't. Would they then have to be reined in by people with superpowers because no one else could stop them? Even though, technically speaking, they haven't actually done anything illegal or that would require, you know, them to be forced to stop. I think it it would kind of come down to a uh, how many times they did it. Mm. Regular people would have to warn them just to, hey, knock that out or knock it off. And if they kept doing it, then yeah, somebody with powers would have to do it. I don't really know. Then there would end up being an odd sort of superpowered disciplinary force? Pretty much, yeah. It'd be a very strange situation. Superpower police. Not even, Not that, even it's like police. Superpowered just... wardens. Yeah. <clears throat> Quick, somebody get dragon Community here. support officers. <laughs> Superpowered community support officers. It's great. Way to uh... take the fun of being a superhero. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Politics and paperwork. Yeah. Probably no pay, too, because those are voluntary. So I have yeah. the power of... So I can turn myself into steel, but I can't carve Brooks with here into someone's car just because I can, or else I'll get the wardens on me? Basically, yeah. That sucks. That's mm. technically vandalism, and that is illegal. That is a crime. Yeah. So. How do they know it was me? Uh, it's your name. I you literally signed your name. Mm. I was framed. <laughs> Somebody else put my name on there. They're a fan, okay? Don't worry about You'd it. You'd probably make that argument and probably win if you were playing your cards right. Okay. On a related note, next topic. 
Zero, take it away. I know you know this speech off by heart. Uh, I don't think I want to do it, because... Mm, really? Stop being a bitch, this is literally your thing. You're right. Just get on with it, I'm giving you permission for once. Yay! Alright. <clears throat> I don't know if I should do Alfred's voice, or should I do a Batman voice? I want to do it in Alfred. Batman. I don't care. It wasn't actually Batman, so I, I just do it in... Yeah. Let me... I want to find the exact quote, so I don't mess this up. And they'll right. fall over and never let you forget it. Like it's the only bad thing you've ever done, and they'll never let you forget it if you mess up one small part of it. Mm-hmm. Because hey, some, mm-hmm. I got practice. Excuse <laughs> me. <clears throat> Give me a second. All right. So, because some men aren't results. looking for anything logical like money. They can't be bought, bullied, reasoned, or negotiated with. Some men just want to watch the world burn. That was terrible. But yeah, some men just want to watch the world burn. Yeah, set the world on fire is the name of the trope. I'm assuming this is what this is because this is immediately what it brought to mind. People that just don't care and just want to see something amusing happen. Something different, something outside of the norm. So they act outside of the norm, often criminally. You know... I used to be like that. I didn't care. I wanted to have something happen. And then I didn't actually do anything. But if I had been pushed in that direction, I feel like I might have done something. What? There was a time when I, I was kind of like this. I, I, I was so bored with my life, I wanted to have something exciting happen. So, I didn't do anything, but I, I considered stepping in front of a bus or once, or, you know, fighting people what? on the street. Wow. All yeah. right. Early high school. Crazy person. Yeah. I had a friend that was like this. I think I've already told the story of the guy that would yell fat randomly in the street. And he yelled it at a girl. She reacted poorly. Then the guys that were nearby reacted poorly to her reacting poorly. It became a thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. People that do this are not what you would call people with common sense. Yeah. Or rather, it's possible that people like this have actually willingly thrown away their common sense for the sake of being amused. Because real life can get really boring and depressing. It can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, writing one of these characters is best if, like me, you've gone through this before. This or at least seen someone actually seen doing somebody this. actually do it. Trying to write it from an outsider's point of view, however, is a lot more difficult. Mm. And it doesn't you always to, work. Yeah, you have to yeah, understand. It's... Go. You have to understand Go. it's when it, some men just want to watch the world burn. They're not doing it. Because they want it, they have any reason to. They aren't doing it because they like the Joker. He sets he sets a giant pile of money on fire. He wasn't doing it for the money. It was to see people's reactions to it. It's because it's, it's be, fun. Sort of the problem with this is the name of that title. It's they don't want anything. Yeah. And that's it's, kind of the problem. They're just doing it because. It's something yeah. to do. The fun of it comes from how other people react to it more than anything else. Yeah. At least that's how my friend was. Why my, why my friend was doing it. He wanted to see how people would react to this crazy, unusual thing happening. What is he doing? He makes no sense. He's yelling fat at random girls. What kind of terrible person is he? Yeah. Oh my God, she's really reacting badly to this. She's stripping off. I'll admit that was an odd thing to odd reaction. And I definitely wouldn't have expected it. But he was probably over the moon with that. Couldn't have been happier. When I was in in this sort of similar mindset, it was more of the fact that real life is and everything around you is so boring. This is just a normal sort of peaceful way of life that you just want something to upset it. Because it's exciting. Yeah. You have to upset it in some way. Because you want to see how people react. You want to see how the world... 
crumbles, burns. Because watching a fire is exciting, this constant movement and change. So you don't want to watch a rock or a pile of sticks. You know? Yeah. It, 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 it's, a, it's a twisted thought process. One I'm glad I got out of, but... Yeah. Depressed me was not fun. Yeah. Hmm. If you are... Yeah, I... Yeah. Go. No, you can go. You're gonna go. You can go. I was going to bring it back to the Joker, so if you've actually got something more prescient to say, then go for it. I was just going to say, if you're writing a character like this, it's always good to explore that character and kind of explain why they're like this to an extent. Because that makes them vastly more interesting. Sort um, of. If I mean, they have a reason. And if they don't have a reason, at the same time, not having a reason, and just finally somebody just snapping like this sometimes, can be interesting in its own way. I mean, it's, it's mm. really like the only way you can do this badly is to not understand what it means to be like this. Mm. See, but, that I'm, I'm two minds about that because sure, it's interesting and it adds depth, but the second it's the second you're done telling that tale, they're just the same kind of character you've seen. Yeah. Sure, that's appealing and I mean, the Joker is still very popular for a reason. But, uh, yeah. There's yeah. a different sort of appeal there, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's very different. So, to explain it in a way that is easy to grasp, doesn't require anecdotes, the Joker, Dark Knight, everyone knows that story. The whole, uh, Alfred speech that Zero gave, uh, snippet of, basically. The, uh... Man in... I think it was Somalia? Is the setting for the story? I think it was Burma. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Burma? Thank you. Yeah. Um, the man in the jungle that would steal uh, gemstones and then just would leave them places. Like, little kids would find them and play with them. Rocks, st- sapphires the size of your fist and stuff like that. Yeah, that was for the reactions of people. So, like, the reactions of, say, Alfred and his comrades, let's call them, how they would react to finding out that he wasn't even selling the gems, he was just doing it for shits and giggles. And then the reaction of them burning down a forest... That was probably the best outcome for him that could have occurred. For that crazy person that was just stealing gems for shits and giggles to see what would happen. Because he made something happen. Yeah. Something new and interesting occurred because of him, and he got to watch the fallout. You got to watch the forest burn. He got to see the world burn. Yeah. As it were. And... In that sense, Alfred basically, you know, accommodated him. Uh, The Joker, meanwhile, is the same sort of thing. He wants to see the reactions of people losing their minds and going against their very rigid social structures. Like, people don't want to kill other people until they have to kill other people, and then they will throw that shit away in an instant. He wants to see them turn into animals and eat each other. Because that's new, that's interesting, that's different. It's like it's like it's watching what? a TV show for him. Mm. Yeah. Let, let's change the genre a little bit. Mm. Yeah, because eventually sitcoms get boring. Yeah. Very. And you want to see you want to see a good tragedy or drama. Or an action movie. Yeah, one way to definitely one way to do these characters is to have them a distorted is to have them have a distorted sense of reality. Yeah. 
So Yeah, like they don't see reality as reality, or they don't see reality with the same importance as other people might. So bending it or destroying it for people is it's inconsequential. It doesn't matter to them. What matters is what they get out of it, what entertainment is brought to the situation for them. I've got a good example of the, or well, not example, but way to word it. Uh, you start seeing in tropes eventually, I've noticed. If you're familiar with a genre, like that, only if with real life. Mm. That would be probably a very low level of this, yeah. People Just sort of, you put things into terms of entertainment, of storytelling, and then you maybe jump to the next step of well, okay, this story is boring. How about I spice it up a little with a little bit of such and such a trope? That's it, exactly. Yeah, you see, you see the patterns and you grow tired of them. Mm. Mm. I think we've covered <sighs> this to the point. Of, yeah, yeah. It's a very disturbing topic, but you know, mm. it's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing to talk about. Yeah. Uh, okay, we did get questions, at least one of them, which is worth answering, and it's a lot less, uh, heavy than that particular topic. I'm just gonna check through the comments, so please vamp for a couple seconds while I look through for questions. So, uh, Zero, you can roll... Zero. Yeah? Zero, you're almost a sociopath. That's interesting. Oh, yeah, totally. Dark times. Dark times. That's That was sophomore and half of junior year in high school. I got really Public weirdly has depressed. A, has a way of doing that to you. Yeah, I got really weirdly depressed, and it got really bad at one point, to the point where I almost didn't go to school and almost ran away from home. Yep. Mm. I just yeah. grew an enhanced, wow, I just grew an enhanced sense of narcissism. What do you mean? <laughs> almost a comedic level of narcissism in high school. Ah. You mean that... Isn't a new thing? Okay. Uh, it's questions. Not at all. <laughs> uh, Ghost13245 asks, If Casey was kidnapped by English ninjas, would you save him, Kenshi? I just want to clarify, Ken, that they will call themselves ninjas. Are they actually ninjas, or are they just... I assume they're actual ninjas. They just call themselves ninjas. Yes, I would. That would be more of a reason to actually hurt them. Oh, he'd yeah. save you. Yeah. Listen, that's just giving me an excuse to go beat things up. Do you really think... I don't need one regularly. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you're not really... You're just giving him an opportunity to start beating things up. Mm. Well, there you go, Ghost. There's your answer. Uh, some guy asks, what inspired us to become writers? We've talked about this before, but we can always mention it again. Yeah, let's summarize. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I saw someone writing something. I thought, hey, I could do that, and I did it. Uh, I, uh, I discovered... Is... Yeah. You can go, you go Slicer. Okay, you can go Slicer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Slicer, just go. Thank Mine you. was only slightly more complex with Casey's, where I saw something, I beta read stuff, and then I thought, hey, I could probably do this. Yeah. Okay. Zero. Um, I, my friends introduced me to fan fiction. I read fairly English story, uh, then Casey's stuff, and then Kenchi's stuff, and I was like, you know what? I totally want to write something too. Wait. 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 I'm your inspiration. Well, Kenchi oh. more so. Yay. Oh. And I did it because of the narcissism I talked about before. I kept reading fan fiction. I was like, man, I could do way better than this. And then I realized it wasn't fair to assume such and decided to actually do it so that I could actually say it and mean it. <laughs> because right, I'm a dick good. like that. Good, huh? <clears throat> I'm a dick, but I would like to prove myself correct at the dickish things that I <laughs> go in detail on. No, see, you say that's a dick move, but that's, like, the best way to handle that possible. Okay. Uh, some guy also asks, uh, what's your favorite kind of soup or stew? Mm. Uh, that's a good question. 
One of my favorite meals is uh, grilled cheese and tomato soup. Also, just tomato soup with, like, uh, crumpled up crackers in it. It's pretty good. Give me a can of SpaghettiOs. Gross. Does chili count as stew? Sure. Sure. Chili. Love a good chili. I was introduced to chili, like, a couple days ago. I bought a bunch of microwavable uh, hot pots, they're called. It's basically just beef chili. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Keep homemade. in mind, it only gets better if it's homemade. Oh, yeah. The yeah. bought stuff is not... It's it's only about half as good, if that. Yeah. It's pretty good, though. And it's super easy to make. Like, a lot of it. Hmm. I've got to say, though, my favorite soup is probably vegetable soup. Hmm. You know, it's, it's just a generic vegetable soup. It's not complicated, but, you know, it has a, a rich flavor to it. I like it. Uh, Neil asks, uh, would you watch a high school DXD series which was entirely without fan service? Now, I can answer this question from experience. Because I watched the first episode of High School DxD season three, it had no censoring. Then it had censoring. Uh, the fourth episode of the series came out a few days ago. I have not watched it, so the answer is probably no. Though, it might be because the censoring is incredibly distracting. That's yeah, that's a good idea. All right. What you what you're describing is essentially a fan fiction. You can't really have fan service on text, so not not visually anyway. It doesn't really work. So I'd say yes, but the setting would probably lose me pretty quick. I'm not terribly interested in it. There's a reason I only read crossover fix in that section because I want to see other characters reacting to that setting, not that setting. Hmm. Okay, and he asks about the Naruto miniseries again. We answered in Reflux. We basically said, uh, we're taking a look at it, we might comment on it from time to time. We're not but, doing anything uh, official, but we're just... We'll, most of us will be reading it. Yeah. Is there a second chapter of that yet? No. Okay. Not that I'm aware Any of. Idea? I'm no, no Any idea? I have no idea what the release schedule happens? is. I assume it's once a oh, week, okay. but yeah. Fair enough. Alright, uh, I think there's another question somewhere. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. Cool. Uh, Rihitia says we should sing more often. I, mm. I want to be the very best that no, no one ever yeah, no, wants. I'm, I'm good. Stop it. <clears throat> You're gonna sing, no, sing something original. <laughs> bring, I can bring it back to South. I want to be the very best that no one ever was. Okay, that was Stop. inventive, but the <laughs> same problem. It's still the same song. I know, it's the best song to sing ever. Sure. Of all time. Other than any Sonic song by Crush 40. <laughs> <laughs> they are unironically pretty good music. Yeah. They did a cover of Fire Woman by uh, Cult, I think it is. It's a pretty good song. The cover is like almost identical to the original version, but you know, whatever. Ah, shit! No Man's Wharf. I hate that place. Yep. Run, ran, run! We can't beat mm. them. <laughs> yeah, it's so dark and miserable down there. Whenever you're down there, you just think, Up there, there's so much room. Babies burp and flowers bloom. Other people dream, I can dream too. Up there, up where skies are ocean blue. And I've forgotten the rest of the words, <laughs> so I'll stop now. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. I don't even remember where that's from. What South Park is it? South Park. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Satan's got some pipes. Yeah, he does. Why am I holding anyway. this torch? <laughs> I don't need to hold this torch. <laughs> oh, thank you, commenter, for giving me permission to sing. I appreciate it. Yeah. That was pretty good, actually. 
No, it wasn't. It was. I mean, uh, it sounded kind of weird with the voice deepening thing you did, but, yeah. That's singing from the diaphragm. That's what you're supposed to do. <clears throat> wow. Mm. Professional here. la da <sighs> Okay. I think we're done, pretty much. Yep. Oh, wait, recommendations. Yeah. Anyone got any? I recommend you go watch the preview for the Overlord anime, because it's sick. Uh, over, hang on, Overlord Anime Preview. It's coming out this year. Video. Like in the fall. It's going to be really good. Overlord is uh, in the video game? Overlord as in the anime. It's light novel, y- manga series. Yeah, it's a light novel series that Zero talked about a while ago. You know, one of those things that he talks about and no one really pays attention to. Right. I do, I just quickly forget the name of the series that he's talking about. Pretty much. I'm sure he's probably talked about Dan Machi before, but yeah. I have probably, talked about yeah. Dan Machi before. Yeah, he has. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it works. Anyway, um, oh, damn it, I closed my tab that had my alerts in it. There we go. Uh, okay, my recommendation is. A World Full of Monsters by Fahad09. If you are not familiar with that author name, you should be, because he, I assume he, wrote uh, Demon Lord's Hero. That Fate Stay DXD crossover that was really good. Yup. <sighs> I reread that story recently. It's a good okay. story. And it's basically how I found this one. So, it is a Naruto self-insert. Uh, with, well, the self-insert is, mm, a lot of the, a lot of self-insert stories tend to go in one direction, which is, I want power, I want power, I want lots and lots of power, and my excuse for wanting all that power is because I want to survive in this world where I'm very, very not likely to survive. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's pretty much where this story is going so far. The self-insert is uh, in the body of a male Hinata. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Mm. So there's a lot of descriptions of how the Byakugan looks when you're actually using it and you have no idea what it looks like. Uh, it's very hard to describe, even though he described it, you know, because it's written. But, you know, it's an interesting perspective of someone who doesn't see like that and then sees like that because, you know, they learn. It's a technique that he has access to. And there is a lot of agenda flipping. Yeah, yeah. It's actually explained really well, too. It's uh, just Kishimoto sells the universe, or he adjusts things so the universe sells right, better. Yeah. Like, nobody would... People wouldn't bond as well with the series if it was a female Naruto, because young you know, boys... It's wouldn't a shonen series. Yeah, shonen. Likewise, the trainer can't be female, because you can't have strong women and such. So, you know, Jiraiya is a woman. And Kishimoto changed it. And Kakashi was toned down as far as power level went. He was nerfed hard. Yeah, basically. That's literally how it's described. Yeah, he got nerfed. Because if he was that strong, then the fucking wave would have been a joke. There would be no tension ever for Naruto and the other Ganon to shine, for Team 7 to shine. Because he would just handle everything the second it got difficult. Mm Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it does some interesting things with the plot. And uh, I think it's worth reading, obviously. Well, it's this guy, and this guy you probably read just about anything. In fact, I could just recommend Fahad09, if that's that's cool. That's, <laughs> sure. See, seems like... The thing that drew me to the story is, one, or, well, soften the blow of it being a self-insert, is, one, we know next to nothing about the main character. We know that he had a family, he grew up, he had a full life, and his son killed him. And that's it. And the second thing is, he was born in that universe. He he came in the pretty much the second he was born. So it's not like he just took the place of an existing character. 
Oh, it took him until he, what, he was like four he, that he realized that he was a male Hinata. Hmm. Yeah. It even does the whole, you know, he's a baby, so yeah. even though he wants to talk, he literally can't. And then he cries, and he is very ashamed of it. Yeah. Uh, it's fun. It's a fun. It's a fun story. It's a nerving story at times, but it's fun. So it's definitely something I recommend looking at. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm... anybody else want to recommend anything? There is nothing. Bullshit. I have a bunch of recommendations in reserve. Well, good for you. Yeah, it is good for me. It is. I read some cool stuff. I uh, not have it. I'm actually out of stuff to read, so I'll have to dip into my to-do list, finally, for the first time in months. Oh, what a shame. I'm crying for you. I'm not Liar. upset about it. I'm just kind of weirded out. It hasn't happened. Oh. Hmm. Well, don't worry about it. Summer's coming up. That means, you know, a bunch of new stories getting written. And updates. You yeah. want to read about and the updates. adventures of Boruto? Because that's what most people are going to be writing. At least in the Naruto section. If any... Don't say mm. that. <laughs> Don't Sorry, say well, that. I am not going to the Naruto section, ever. They're not going to do that. You sure about there that? Is not enough, there's not enough canon to work from. I'm willing to do it to you one person will. Of course someone will, but 99.99% of people are still going to be writing... You know, pre tuning exams, Naruto stories. <laughs> it's true. There's always that stopping point. That should be like a topic. I don't know if we've talked about that before. The stopping point of when people give up on fan fictions? Yeah. I'll add it to the list. I like that. That's, that's, that's something that needs to be talked about. Stopping point of fix. fix. There we go. Fuck. What? What just happened? Why? Huh? Oh, Are you I clapping got, and then hurt you yourself? Doing? No, I got... I uh, fucking hit myself because I got killed in Dark Souls. Oh. And you wonder how you get injured. How often are you going to hit yourself? Because, I mean... It was really... You do it every really, time you die? No, this was bad. This was stupid. After playing Dark Souls 1 and 2, I've come to the conclusion that even if I lose a bunch of souls or blood echoes or in Bloodborne or anything, I'm just not going to worry about it. I can get it back later. You just got to relax. Yeah, yeah um, but in Dark Souls 2, that means your soul memory is fucked up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and the thing is, Dark Souls 1 was challenging, but it was fair. Dark Souls 2 was a little bit bullshit. But mostly fair. Scholar of the First Sin is just bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> there are far more situations where it's bullshit. But the Shrine of Amana is slightly easier. How? They change the enemy placement so they don't all aggro at the same damn time. Ugh. <sighs> Fucking Bastille. God damn. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> Christ. What? Are you listening to Bastille again? <laughs> Hey Casey. But if you close your Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> okay. We're wrapping this thing up. And on that note. I would like to thank everybody for listening to the Fanflux Podcast episode 84. If you'd like to get in contact with us, you can do so through the box, but page through the comments, or on personal profiles on Facebook.net, or the YouTube channel through the comments. Please donate on Patreon if you feel so inclined. Once again, I would like to thank everybody for listening to the Fanflux Podcast episode 84. Bye now. Bye. See you guys. Later. Am I going to be an optimist about this? <laughs> I'm gonna be an optimist about this. You can think of worse things to get stuck in your head. Yeah, it's a good song. It's it is. Never knocking a good song. <laughs>